Brotherhood Without Banners The Brotherhood Without Banners is an outlaw band working against Lannister interests in the Riverlands at the time of the War of the Five Kings, though their goal is to protect the small folk from any force preying on them, regardless of which king or lord they support. The group was indirectly created by Eddard Stark, the hand of the king to Robert Baratheon, when he sent out a force of knights and soldiers led by Beric Dondarrion to restore peace and justice in the Riverlands at the onset of the War of the Five Kings, bolstered by several of his own household guards from House Stark. Trapped behind enemy lines after the battle at the Mummer's Ford, they became a guerrilla group, and were joined by deserters from different armies in the war as well as commoners trying to defend their homes. The Brotherhood continues to fight to protect the commoners of the Riverlands and dispense justice on any who prey on them. Following the Red Wedding, the Brotherhood became a force for resistance against the Lannisters and their allies in the North and the Riverlands. They proved to be particularly problematic for House Fry, rallying the commoners in revolt and raiding Walder Frey's camps and supply trains. The Freys found themselves stretched thin with the Brotherhood's ongoing harassment, and the aging Walder was reluctantly forced to request support from his Lannister masters. However, in recent years, the Brotherhood, most of whom worshipped the Lord of Light, has turned its attention from the warring High Lords to the White Walkers and their army of the dead, marching north to help in the fight against them. History The Brotherhood Without Banners was formed in the aftermath of the battle at the Mummer's Ford. Eddard Stark, the hand of the king to Robert Baratheon, charged Lord Beric Dandarian with bringing the king's justice onto Ser Gregor Clegane after receiving reports from harassed small folk that the mountain was terrorizing the Riverlands. This was being done clandestinely on the orders of his liege, Lord Tywin Lannister, whose son Tyrion had been arrested by Caitlin Stark, the daughter of Hoster Tully, Lord of the Riverlands, and accused of attempting to murder her son Bran. The survivors were trapped behind enemy lines when Joffrey Baratheon ascended the Iron Throne with Tywin Lannister as the new hand, but led by Dondarrion and Thuris of Myr, they formed the Brotherhood to harass Lannister forces. Over time, they began to feel that none of the factions in the War of the Five Kings were effectively looking out for the welfare of the commoners. Both Starks and Lannisters would burn out farms in the Riverlands just to deny the other the use of their crops. The Brotherhood therefore decided to fight for no banner of one king or another in the war, but to fight to defend the common people against raiding parties of soldiers who prey on the weak during the war. From the core group which was originally sent out by Eddard Stark, and contained some of his own household guards from Winterfell, the Brotherhood attracted new members during the course of the war, as it was joined by Stark and Baratheon deserters, as well as simple commoners who wanted to defend their homes. In short, the Brotherhood are a ragtag but dangerous band of misfits who rob from the rich to give to the poor, making hit-and-run attacks then retreating back to the forests. Game of Thrones, Season 2 At Harenhal, the Lannister torturer known as the Tickler interrogates prisoners from a nearby village and demands to know where the Brotherhood is, what they are planning and which villagers are collaborating with them. After the poisoning of Amory Lorch, Gregor Clegane believes the Brotherhood is responsible. Tywin considers the name to be grandiose for a band of brigands and outlaws. Tywin is angered that the Brotherhood is operating behind the Lannister lines and harrying their forces with impunity. Game of Thrones, Season 3 Following their escape from Harenhal, Arya, Hot Pie, and Gendry are ambushed by the Brotherhood as they attempt to make their way to Riverrun. The trio are questioned by Thuris, who mistakes them for war refugees, and invites them back to a nearby inn for food and drink. The Brotherhood also captures the Hound, who identifies Arya. The Brotherhood refuses to let Arya go, effectively making her their hostage. Meanwhile, Gendry chooses to join them. After he is set free by the Brotherhood, Sandor abducts Arya. Game of Thrones, Season 6 Lothar Fry and Walder Rivers report to their father that, besides the river lords rising against House Fry, the Brotherhood is rallying the commoners against them and is striking against their supply lines and camps in the Riverlands. The Freys find themselves stretched out too thin to take Riverrun and ask for aid from the Lannisters in King's Landing. Three riders scout out rebuilding small folk, among them the Hound. The riders demand whatever supplies they can get, though the leader of the community, Ray, tells them that they have nothing to offer. The riders depart with an excerpt of a prayer to the Lord of Light, and the Hound realizes that they are from the Brotherhood. The community is later found dead to a man, and the Brotherhood is implied to be responsible. The Hound, angered that his peaceful community was slaughtered, resolves to find the men responsible. He encounters a small group of them, among them two of the assailants. He effortlessly kills them all using an axe, and tracks down the others in the group, which leads him to the Brotherhood leadership. 
Beric Dondarrion and Thuris of Mir have already put nooses around the necks of the other men responsible for the attack, and allow the Hound to personally hang two of them. Beric and Thuris then try to recruit the Hound into their newest mission, traveling north to fight a great evil that threatens all of humanity regardless of which banner they fall behind. Game of Thrones, Season 7 The Brotherhood, with the Hound now part of the group, continues its march north under Beric and Thuris. They arrive at a farm once owned by a farmer encountered by the Hound during his travels with Arya. The Hound is reluctant to stay there, but the Brotherhood needs a place to stop, rest, and warm now that winter had come. While some of the Brotherhood looks around for any hidden grain or wealth and Thuris lights a fire by a nearby hearth, the Hound and Beric mourn the skeletons of the farmer and his daughter and wonder how they died. Beric postulates that they were starving, and rather than let his daughter starve to death, the father ended it quickly for the both of them. The two sit down, and the Hound wonders aloud why the Lord of Light keeps letting Thuris bring Beric back from the dead and expresses his continued disbelief in Lawler. Thuris summons the Hound to the fire he has lit and implores him to look into the flames, where the Hound witnesses a vision of Eastwatch by the sea along the wall and a mountain shaped like an arrowhead. He sees the White Walkers and dead things marching on the wall, which disturbs him. Later, Thuris finds the Hound digging graves for the farmer and his daughter. He mourns their deaths, saying that they did not deserve to die. Thuris looks on, surprised by the Hound. About a mile south of the wall, they are spotted and captured by a group of wildlings serving alongside the Night's Watch at Eastwatch. Shortly afterwards, King Jon Snow and his men arrive to travel beyond the wall to capture a white as evidence for the queens in the south. After Jon states that they do not have enough men, Tormund leads them to the cells to meet with Beric, Thuris, and the Hound, claiming they want to go north of the wall too. Jon immediately recognizes the Hound after seeing him originally at Winterfell. Gendry advises not to trust them since they sold him to Melisandre to be murdered. Yora Mormont also recognizes Thuris after fighting alongside him during the Greyjoy Rebellion. Due to much tension in the room, Beric begins an impassioned speech that the Lord of Light brought them together, but Sandor cuts him off and asks Jon if they are coming with them. Jon agrees, claiming that they are all on the same side because they are all breathing. The Brotherhood, Jon, Yora, Gendry, Tormund and a few other wildlings then pass through the gate and meet a giant snowstorm. Beyond the wall, Thuris is badly injured during a battle with a white snow bear, and later dies of his wounds. Beric grieves for his old friend, and burns his body with his flaming sword. Game of Thrones, Season 8 Led by Tormund and Beric, a group surviving Brotherhood, Wildlings and Night's Watch makes it to Last Hearth after escaping the fall of the wall. They find blood but no corpses in the courtyard of the castle. Going deeper into the dark castle, they stumble upon Edison Tollet and the survivors of the Night's Watch. The group discovers Ned Umber dead inside the Great Hall, pinned against to the wall with a group of severed limbs in a spiral formation around his body. Beric states that it is a message sent by the Night King. When Ned Umber reanimates as a white with blue eyes and slashes at torment with a knife, Beric burns the white with his flaming sword and the entire spiral symbol is lit on fire. On horseback, the Brotherhood reaches Winterfell along with the other survivors, eventually joining in the battle against the army of the dead. Beric and several other members are killed in the ensuing conflict. The current state of the Brotherhood is unknown. Known members. Angui, a champion archer from the Stormlands. Brotherhood member. Former members. Lord, Beric Dandarian. Thuris. Lem. Morgan. Steve. Riddell. Gattens. Two unidentified former members. Sandor Clegane. In the books. In the A Song of Ice and Fire novels, a group of soldiers, knights, and armed peasants known as the Brotherhood without banners forms to help protect the small folk in the Riverlands from the depredations of the war and abuses of military forces, particularly the Lannisters but also Stark forces. The known members of the Brotherhood, till Beric's final death, are Lord Beric Dundarian, the Lightning Lord, the leader Thuris of Mir Edric, Ned, Dane, Lord of Starfall and House Dane in Dorne, Beric's squire, nephew of Arthur Dane, Ashera Dane and Illyria Dane, Lord Beric's betrothed Lem, Lemoncloak Harwin, formerly a member of the Household Guard of Eddard Stark Jack B. Lucky Tom of Seven Streams, also known as Tom O'Sevens or Tom Seven Strings, a singer of dubious repute. The Mad Huntsman, who caught the Hound. 
Pelo of Tyrosh, also known as Greenbeard. Angui the Archer. Merida Muntown. Wadi the Miller. Swampy Meg. John Anudden. Melly. Puddingfoot. Dick, also known as Beardless Dick. Dennett. Luke, also known as Likely Luke. Mudge. Notch. Kyle, killed in a battle with the brave companions. Alan of Winterfell. The core of the Brotherhood are formed from the force of 100 soldiers, that Eddard himself sent out under the command of Beric Dandarian to bring Gregor Clegane to justice, when news came that Gregor was raiding villages in the Riverlands. In fact, it was Tywin's intention to goad Eddard into confronting him in order to use it as a pretext for war, and he knew Eddard's strong sense of justice would prevent him from letting Gregor's depredations of the small folk go unanswered. Thus the Lannisters anticipated this response and laid a trap for the men sent by Eddard at the Battle of Mummer's Ford, in which most of the force was destroyed. The goal of the trap was actually to lure Eddard himself out of the safety of the capital city in order to kill or capture him during the ambush. However, Tywin was not aware at the time that Eddard was injured during a brawl with Jaime, thus could not lead the hunt for Ser Gregor in person, inadvertently thwarting the Lannister plan. About a third of Dondarrion's force led by Thuras managed to cut their way out of the ambush, though Dondarrion himself was killed. His body was recovered, however, and when Thuras reflexively recited a prayer to the Lord of Light over his deceased friend, much to his surprise Dondarrion magically returned to life. The few survivors led by Dondarrion were cut off behind enemy lines, and decided to form the Brotherhood to continue to harass Gregor's forces, still following Eddard's orders to make the Lannisters answer for their crimes. Eddard supplemented Beric's expedition with members of his own personal guard, thus several members of the Brotherhood are the last survivors of his household guard from Winterfell who accompanied him to King's Landing. One of them, Harwin, was even present when Eddard and his sons found the six dire wolf pups in the first chapter of the first novel. They continue to fight in memory of Eddard, but after seeing the suffering of the small folk as both Lannister and Stark forces burned out villages to deny them to the enemy, they began to fight for the ideal of protecting the small folk from both Lannister and Stark soldiers. It is stated that about one-third of Dondarrion's original 100 men died in the ambush at Mummer's Ford, thus the original core group of the Brotherhood consisted of about 30 to 40 men, it is unclear how many were from Eddard's personal guard, though this was later supplemented by small folk and deserters from different sides in the war. By the second novel, the same time span as season 2 in the TV series, the Brotherhood has become an irritant to the Lannister army at Harrenhal and Gregor Clegane's men are trying to find the Brotherhood's leaders. Many characters who later formed the Brotherhood were introduced at the Tourney of the Hand in the first novel. This tourney did occur in season 1 of the TV series, but the characters were not introduced, because they would not really make a significant appearance until season 3, they are given cameos in the first novel but only reappear as the Brotherhood in the third novel, though as in season 2 of the TV series, in the second novel characters do mention that something called the Brotherhood is harassing Lannister supply lines. At the tourney of the hand, Angui won the archery contest and Thuras won the melee contest. This is why they arrived in King's Landing, and were available when Eddard ordered Beric to lead out a group of able knights to bring Gregor Clegane to justice, the soldiers who formed the original core of the Brotherhood. Thus the connection might be lost on the TV audience that one of the reasons the Brotherhood is such a disproportionately capable fighting force is because so many of its initial members were elite fighters who came to the capital city to participate in the tourney of the hand. For example it might a bit contrived in the TV series that, as if by pure chance, the Brotherhood's lead archer Angui just happens to be preternaturally skilled with a bow. The books actually do explain that he is a professional archer so skilled that he actively competes in tournaments, and indeed recently won first place at a royal level archery tournament. Moreover, he doesn't just happen to be wandering in the Riverlands, but the rational reason was given that he was in the capital for a major tournament, before being sent out with Dondarrion. Following the massacre of the Stark army at the Red Wedding, the Brotherhood is one of the few remaining pockets of resistance against Lannister control in the Riverlands. The one or two dozen original members of the Brotherhood who used to be part of Eddard's personal guard, such as Harwin, are thus one of the only groups of Stark soldiers who managed to escape death or capture in the war. Even after the Red Wedding, they continue to fight the Lannisters in the name of King Robert and Lord Eddard. Although the Brotherhood claims to protect the small folk, they sometimes rob the same people they are supposed to protect, as they did to the old woman prisoner. She told bitterly that Beric took two of my chickens and gave me a bit of paper with a mark on it. Can I eat a bit of raggy old paper, I ask you? Will it give me eggs? 
the Brotherhood members that encountered Arya, Gendry, and Hot Pie intended to treat them similarly, take their horses and pay with a paper. To justify their acts, they claim that they will pay after the war is over, and that they can make better use of those items than their previous owners by fighting for the good of the realm. Even if the Brotherhood intends to honor its obligations, it is not much of consolation to the poor people they rob. Downfall Following the Red Wedding, the Brotherhood finds Caitlin's body. Harwin begs Thuris to give her the kiss of life, but Thuris refuses, since it has been too long. Beric puts his lips to Caitlin's, and the flame of life passes from him to her, this turns to be a serious mistake. Caitlin is reanimated as the monstrous Lady Stoneheart. She replaces Beric as the leader of the Brotherhood. Under the leadership of Lady Stoneheart, the Brotherhood soon falls low, and currently it is no longer different than any outlaw band, they even violate the scared guest right. Protecting commoners is no longer their concern, instead they prey upon Freys, or people who have some connection to the Freys or Lannisters, and kill them, regardless whether those people actually participated in the Red Wedding, or ever harmed Starks. As a result, many of the original members, among them Angui and Edric Dane, abandon the Brotherhood. Lem, Jack and others, however, seem to be content with the current status of the Brotherhood. The current members of the Brotherhood are Lady Stoneheart, also known as the Hangwoman, the Silent Sister, and Mother Merciless. Lem Lemon Cloak. Thuris of Mir. Harwin. Jack B. Lucky. Tom of Seven Streams, currently in Riverrun as a musician in Lord Emmon Frey's household. Ser Gendry of the Hollow Hill. Notch. Likely Luke. Mudge. Beardless Dick. Dennett. Since most of the aforementioned members are low-life rascals, it is highly unlikely they will take upon themselves altruistic missions, like going north to fight the army of the dead. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.